you're doing damage control. For her to act the way she did, Okay, I just sent a thing. If Terry's on online, that he's going to get an invitation to join me here. I won't even have to call him. All right, let's go back here. Bet. Thank you. <laughs> See ya. Thanks. Bye. Good evening, everybody. This is Ron with Emergency Management Associates coming to you live from the crossroads of the West in Salt Lake City, <coughs> excuse me, Salt Lake City, Utah, on Saturday, January 18th, 2020. We want to welcome everybody here. We've had some major technical difficulties for the last 45 minutes, and we're sorry we got started a bit late, but we are better late than never at this point in time. So welcome here to the Freedom Revolution Network, the Emergency Management Associates Preparedness Radio and Television Show coming to you live want to we want to welcome everybody that's here in our chat room and wherever you are viewing this program we want to welcome you here we have invited terry to be here we're hoping that he uh, comes over uh, to join us live he has a few things he wants to discuss with us all right All right, we have quite a few things that we want to discuss with you. I uh, don't see Terry joining us quite yet, but um, we do have some things we want to talk about. If I can find what I'm looking for here. First off, we've had a 6.0 magnitude earthquake down in um, Papua New Guinea today. Actually, I'm not, I'm sorry, it wasn't Papua New Guinea. It was over in the, um, it was over in Indonesia. It was over in Indonesia, 6.0 magnitude earthquake. And uh, we wanted to let you know about that. Um, it has been going and going and going. And um, it's just, it's been a wild day to say the least just been a wild day to say the least. Um, we, we had not even realized the full extent to what these earthquakes have done um, till earlier this afternoon, but we have a firm hand um, and we got our head wrapped around what has happened. And so we wanted to bring you that information uh let's see here i'm just i'm looking for something here go 
gosh, this is weird. All right. I'm hoping this comes up. It's just been one of those days, folks. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, we have just been laboring under a lot of stress and a lot of things have happened today, but uh, we are still here. We wanna let you know we are still here. Let's look at the earthquakes that have hit us so far today. If this will come up. <laughs> like I said, it's just been one of those days today. Okay, come on. All right. I think we're ready to go here. I hope we're ready to go here. Okay, we are. Okay, I just brought up the USGS map. And I hope you can see it. Maybe you can't. Let me try this one more time. If we can bring this up. No. Oh, this is really weird. I've never seen this happen before. This is totally weird, folks. Anyway, let's just do this. I'm not going to worry about this. I'm just going to do it live. Um, again, today we had a 6.0 magnitude earthquake. And this one happened. Uh, down in Indonesia. This um, earthquake happened early this morning, matter of fact. This is just totally weird. This happened early this morning. It has since had a lot of aftershocks. We've had at least four to six aftershocks as a result of this earthquake. It happened in Abapura, Indonesia, where we have seen 7.0 magnitude earthquake about mid-year last year. It was 141 kilometers, approximately, um, I want to say 70 miles west of Abapura, 141 kilometers, 70 miles west of our Abapura, Indonesia. 75 miles. Um, again, we've had a lot of aftershocks as a result of this earthquake. I want to show you um, just a, a second here. I'm going to show you the map that I am using here. I can't bring up this other map for the life of me, so I'm going to show you the map that I use here. This will show you where all of the aftershocks have happened. Again, this is a large earthquake. Oh man, I keep messing technical difficulties here. 
again, I'm going to show you where the 6.0 magnitude earthquake hit. This earthquake resulted in all of these aftershocks. All of these aftershocks down here in Indonesia. So that was quite a, a hit. Now I have, because of things that I've had to be involved with today, I have not had time to go and check out the uh, seismology on this, to check the numbers on it, to see if USGS is indeed telling us the truth. It's possible. It is possible that they are telling us the truth in this uh, regards to this earthquake. But I'm telling you right now, these this is an awful lot of aftershocks. Uh, we have probably, I want to say, two, four, five, six, seven uh, aftershocks since this earthquake. The largest have been a 4.9, a 4.9 aftershock, 4.3, 3.5. 2.8 and a 2.7 as a result of this earthquake uh, today down in Indonesia. Over in uh, central Indonesia, we had a 4.2 magnitude earthquake in central Indonesia today. Over here in Java, and actually before we even get to Java, Sumba region, We've had two earthquakes, a 2.8 and a 3.0 today. Going over to Java, Indonesia, in the Eastern Java, we've had a 3.1. Uh, Central Java, uh, just east of Jakarta, we've had a 2.6 magnitude earthquake. Going up on the other side, on the west side of Jakarta, we have a 2.9 and a 2.8 magnitude earthquake there. Now, why am I telling you this? Because we've had a 6.0 magnitude earthquake in uh, Eastern Indonesia. This could spread west. This could spread west. And given all the other earthquakes over here in the Java area, they could easily get hit with a like earthquake there. Even though this was, I don't believe this was a deep earthquake. And let's go check and just double check this. No, this is a fairly shallow quake of 21 uh, miles beneath the surface. 21 miles beneath the surface of the Earth. So it's still possible. It's still possible that this earth, uh, earthquake could spread. It's still possible that this earthquake could spread. Going up into the Philippines, we've had 3.4 activity, 3.5 over on Davao Island, Mindano, Philippines. Mindano, Philippines. North of there in Jabunga, Jabunga, excuse me, Jabunga, Philippines, we've had a 3.3. Going up towards where they had that, that huge um, volcano go off, tall volcano, we have a 3.8. This is where the 3.8 hit, just south of where that volcano is, where tall volcano is. Over in southern Japan, we've had a 3.1. Over Honshu, we've had another 3.1. Right here's a 3.1. And just north of there, we've had a 2.7. Let's go up to Hokkaido. Hokkaido's had a 3.6 magnitude earthquake today. Now, some of you have been talking about what has been happening over at Kamchatka Peninsula. As you know, we've had several earthquakes up there. And the seismic energy is headed through the Aleutian Islands already. But today we had a 4.0 magnitude earthquake just over off the shore of Kamchatka Peninsula. This is going to go over into the Aleutian Islands over here very shortly. But let me show you what is already happening 
over there. Here's Tenango Volcano. Had a minor earthquake at Tenango Volcano today. 1.7. Amukta. Amukta. M-A-M-U-K-T-A. -A -A. We had a 3.3. And just northwest of there, we had a 3.2. Yesterday, we had four point zeros here. We fully expect this to continue. Just south of Kodiak Island, we had a 2.8. Kodiak Island's right there. This is the 2.8. And just north of Kodiak Island, we have a 2.9 and a 1.8. Now, with all that said, we're not going to spend a lot of time here in Alaska, but I wanted to show you what is actually going on here. We've had a 1.7 magnitude earthquake at Mount Redoubt. And just north of that one, we've had a 0 0.6. A 0 0.6. So with all that said, Seismic activity has hit Mount Redoubt Volcano again. Over in, over in the uh, Denali National Park, Denali National Park, this is the summit of Mount McKinley. This earthquake, let me show you, it was just northeast of uh, Mount McKinley, 1.9. 1.9 just northeast of McKinley. Then almost directly north of McKinley was a 2.0. So we still have seismic activity going up to the central part of Alaska. To the central part of Alaska. Today is the first time in a week that we've had seismic activity go up above the Arctic Circle. Here's a 2.1 at the Arctic Circle. I want to show you that. Then just north of there, literally. This is at Katowic. Here's a 2.98. It has been a week since we've had any earthquakes at the Arctic Circle or over at Katowic. Katowic being the area where we have oil and gas pumping operations on the North Shore. On the North Shore. So that's what's going on in Alaska today. All right, um, I wanted to spend just a little while, just a short while over in uh, the Southeast, over in Chi Lao or Laos, Laos uh, Thailand, we have a 1.9. Oh, I'm sorry, oh, got it. There's a 1.9 there. And then these other two earthquakes, we have a 2.4 and a 2.2 magnitude quake in that, gen, that same general area. Over in Pakistan, we have a 4.7. Going over We had an earthquake directly in the Red Sea, but I'm not showing it. This is in the Red Sea, but it's part of Russia, just off the coast of the Republic of Dagestan, Dagestan, uh, Russia. Oh God, it keeps going away. Here's a 3.5 earthquake in the Red Sea there. We had a 4.0, they've taken it down. All right, over in Eastern Turkey, actually, I'm sorry, that's Western Turkey at 2.9. Over in, over in Greece, we've had a number of earthquakes there. None of these over in Greece have amounted to much more than ones and twos. 1.20, 1.20, 1.20. 
uh, 1.9, 1.6, 1.4, and that kind of thing there. About 30 earthquakes in Greece today all over, literally. Going over into Sicily, we have a 2.2 over near Stromboli and Mount Etna. A 2.2 near Stromboli volcano and Etna volcano today. To the south of Italy, Calabria, Italy had a 3.3. A 3.3 magnitude quake hit there. All right. Central Italy, we had another 2.3. Now this one is over into the northern part of Europe. This is a 2.9. Then right at the border of Spain and France, we have a couple small earthquakes there. These are 1.6 and 2.1 magnitude quakes. And then down into the western part of Spain, we have a few earthquakes there. Uh, 2.3, 2.1, 1.6, and a 2.0 magnitude quake in, in uh, uh, Portugal. In Portugal. That's the extent of the earthquakes there. Over in the Azores, we have a 2.2 magnitude earthquake in um, what they call Vincent Ridge, um, Azores. Okay. We've had some small and moderate earthquakes over in northern, um, northern uh, Argentina and Chile. 3.3s, 3.8s, 3.6s, um, 3.0s in Kalama. Over near Santiago, we've had a 3.0 in Coquimbo and another uh, 3.5 just south of there. So that's what's happened down in South America. We had one um, moderate earthquake over in the south central part of Peru, we had a 4.5. There's a lot of fours going on because that's what the majority of the earthquakes have been, fours. Over in Venezuela, we had a 2.9. Now across the Caribbean from Venezuela, over in um, the south of Puerto Rico, we continued to get a lot of earthquakes, aftershocks of those, that 8.0 and 8.4 before that. Now, someone challenged me. Someone challenged me on Facebook today and over on YouTube, on our YouTube channel. They said I did not show any seismographs or heliograms or anything. I did. I did share that. Unfortunately, some people are either too hard-headed or just plain did not want to admit that we posted those on our show and showed those on our show. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to show you what we had. I'm going to show you those quakes. Right here and right now. And if you'll just bear with me for a minute while this comes up, I'm going to share it with you and show you that it was a lot larger than a 6.0 or a 6.4, as USGS and the other agencies put it. I'm tired of getting flack from these supposed know-it-alls, and I'm calling them know-it-alls, that think that they don't know better than I do, when I've been studying this a lot more years than they ever thought of. 
and I've done my research. It's not that I'm smarter than anybody else. I'm not. What I'm one, wanting to show you is that these people are quick to judge when they have no qualifications. And I'm tired of taking flack for their know-it-all busyness. They're wanting to put me down, put Terry down, and put our research down. And I'm quite tired of it. If they can't get their acts together, I'm sorry. It's too bad. It's too bad. Okay, I'm going to show you this. I'm hoping you can see this. I. Okay, it's not going to do it. Let me to let me do this. I'm going to show it to you because I'm going to turn the camera around. Okay, folks, there it is. There is the information right there. This happened on January sixth. You notice. You notice up on the upper part and the lower part that the stylus left the paper. Notice that the earthquake began here. The earthquake began here. It started off and then it came out and peaked. And then it went back down. This earthquake lasted better than an hour. Each of these lines here indicates minutes. It went a total of 60 minutes and continued. And it continued. Unfortunately, I didn't, I didn't uh, log the next day's um, heliogram, or I'd be able to show you exactly how long it lasted. If you'll notice, it lasted an awful long time. A 6.0 magnitude earthquake does not last that long. A 6.0 magnitude earthquake does not last that long. So those of you that want to challenge me, go ahead, make my day. Go ahead, make my day. I happen to know what I'm talking about, folks. I've been doing this an awful long time. Terry has been doing it an awful long time. We do know what we're talking about. I am, frankly, very tired of someone that goes by the name of Deb LeClerc. She has been my a pain in my side for weeks now. Now, let me qualify that. Let me qualify that and let you know exactly what's been going on with Deb LeClerc. This woman had been watching and hearing me talk about politics on my YouTube show one night about three, four weeks ago, whatever it's been. And she goes, okay, I'm done with the, po with the politics, I'm leaving. And we tried to invite her back, invite her to stay and she wouldn't do it. Prior to this day, I had, we had been on a pretty good working relationship on YouTube or a friendship on YouTube, whatever you wanna call it. And I had actually invited her to be a mod on her program. From the night that she decided to storm off the program, she's been out there hounding me, harassing me, and harassing Terry and the things that we've been doing on this broadcast. The last straw was today when, excuse me, friends of mine on the same Facebook page 
where she posted derogatory comments mentioning my name and Terry Rumpel's name in public, which is slander, and said I didn't know what I was talking about. And that six, that 8.4 and 8.0 magnitude quake, the 8.4 hit on the 6th of January. On Friday, the following three days later, on the 9th, we had the 8.0 there. And then we had another 8.0 in Siberia, Russia, the following day. Miss LeClerc needs to stop talking about stuff that she doesn't know what she's talking about. Now I know doggone well that she's hearing me now. Since she slandered me, I decided I was going to defend myself. And if she claims that she didn't slander me, guess what? There were screenshots, Deb. We have screenshots. I'm tired of your, your hypocritical nonsense. I'm tired of you saying that I don't know what I'm talking about because obviously I do. I just showed you the heliograph. I just did. So if you really want to argue this point, go ahead and make my day. But like I said, I just defended myself. Do you want her to make it a big deal? I just defended myself, my friend. I'm tired of the ignorance of people that tried to attack me that don't know what's going on, that have no business attacking me. If you want to talk to me, and I've told everybody this, it's easy enough to find me and talk face to face, either on a, on a Facebook uh, messenger video or call me. I'd be happy to talk with you and discuss things. But if you want to openly criticize me in the social media, friends, you need to realize I will defend myself. I know what's going on. I wasn't born yesterday. It was the day before that. Okay. I'm going to get off my face or my, my Facebook. I'm going to get off my rant because frankly, I don't like these rants. I'm frankly tired of it, but I'm even more tired of people that are attacking me that don't know what's going on. Cause obviously they don't, obviously they don't. Okay. Before we leave Europe, I wanted to talk about Iceland. You notice we got a bunch of shakers up just south of Iceland and it's on the Northern Mid-Atlantic Ridge, the Northern Mid-Atlantic Ridge. Iceland Iceland is right here. These are just offshore, south and east of Iceland. Or I'm sorry, south and west of Iceland. Okay. But all of these, 3.5, 3.3, 3.0, 4.5, all these either are right on or all around the mid northern mid atlantic ridge a fault zone a fault zone and that fault zone goes right through iceland now i read an article earlier this week that said an earthquake was going to divide iceland they said an earthquake was going to divide iceland in half and you you'll notice the northern mid-Atlantic ridge goes right through the middle of Iceland. Goes from the west to the east and right directly north. So it is possible. I don't think it will happen in our lifetimes, but it is possible. All right. Now we've talked about 
the Middle e the uh, Southeast Asia. We talked about the Middle East and most of Europe. I want to go over to, um, well, first off, let's go over to Hawaii first. Let's talk about Hawaii. You notice right down here in Pahala, we are still getting a lot of earthquakes. Again, all those earthquakes are due to magma infilling Kilauea. All those are because of magma infill at Kilauea. All right, let's go up to Mauna Loa. Here is a 2.1 just outside of the south. It's on this, it's right here. Let me show you. Let me zoom this in a little bit more. Here's Mauna Loa. There's the crater of Mauna Loa. And there at 2.0 is just over here on the north flank of Mauna Loa. Mauna Loa. Over towards Mauna Kea, we have a 1.94. A 1.94 there. So that's where the earthquakes were. Over around Mauna Kea, Mauna Loa, and Pahala today. Pahala. So that's what's going on there. Let's go over to the United States. We talked about earthquakes down south in the South Pacific. That's where earthquakes come from, is in the South Pacific. Um, I'm just checking messages. My phone has been going ding, ding, ding. And so I wanted to check and see if we had anything that we need to address. Before we continue here. Um, before we actually go into the mainland United States, I wanted to tell you that earlier today, we've had a good sized eruption from Shishalden volcano over in the southern southwestern part of the Alaska Peninsula in Oon, Alaska. She's Holden volcano has been erupting. Okay. The next photograph you're going to see, you're going to see lightning that looks like it's coming out of the volcano. This lightning is coming out of the sky and probably the volcano itself. Whenever we have a large scale eruption from a volcano, there's a darn good chance that it could be accompanied by lightning. We showed you pictures earlier this week of when Tal volcano erupted in Indonesia and all the super fantastic uh, photographs of people that caught lightning seemingly burst from the Tal volcano. This was from Shishalden Volcano in southwestern Alaska on, Un, uh, on the peninsula at Un, Alaska. So I want to show you that Shishalden Volcano is erupting. Okay, now let's go over into northwestern, excuse me, northwestern United States. Bainbridge Island, Washington. We have a 2.01 magnitude earthquake at Bainbridge Island in Washington. That is right next to the Puget Sound. Okay, as you notice, that's right next to the Puget Sound there. Bainbridge, Washington had an earthquake. Now, before we get going any further, I'm gonna see if we can bring our friend Terry Rumpel back up here on the line. 
because he had some things that he wanted to talk about, and we would love to have Terry Rumpel part of our uh, our broadcast tonight. You'll have to excuse me. I've been drinking a lot of water today. Hey, Terry, give me a jingle. This is Ron. Thanks. Bye. Well, I hope Terry will join us. I hope Terry will join us. Um, he has, I gave him, a, I sent him an invite to join us live on the program. And uh, he was live on the telephone with us earlier when we had technical difficulties. But obviously, he's not available right now. So we'll go on. We'll go on. All right. Anyway, this is the only earthquake that's showing in Washington and Oregon tonight. It's the only earthquake that's showing in Washington and Oregon tonight, which I find very interesting. Because earlier tonight, I was over at PNSN and I saw quite a few, um, I saw quite a few um, earthquakes and I saw some other interesting information while I was there. So we're going to go over to PNSN. Ah, uh, Joker's wild. He's over in chat. I'm looking at chat while this other this other web page pulls up. Uh, Joker's wild said the CME and solar wind, as well as the interference waves, um, from wherever, should be active until the close in the middle of February if we get a break. He's absolutely right because we've had uh, we had a CME and we've had interference of the solar wind, which pushed that CME in, and we have still have a, a solar wind going now. Uh, G. Sully, thank you for saying that uh, we're, I'm a special human being. Well, thank you very much from Brizzy, Australia. Um, I have quite a few friends over there in Brizzy. Uh, my friend Wendy is over there, and I've got three or four other uh, very close friends. Wendy is like is a very much sister to me. So if you know who Wendy is, please uh, tell her or ask her to join us. I posted information on what we're doing on my Facebook page, and I know she sees it. She and her husband will see it, but I would love for her to join us on this program. Um Washington and Oregon are moving. Uh, Terry apparently is in the uh, chat room, which I was not aware of because I've just been busy here. Here's Scooter Pie saying, Terry's in chat, Terry's in chat. That's awesome, thank you. Uh, Terry, I've invited you to be on the program if you want to come on live uh, here, and you can even answer questions on uh, on the program if you like to come over. Uh, okay, I've, been, I've already talked about Schusholden Volcano. And yes, uh, Diana Clerk, Diana Clink said that uh, you probably, if you're in the US, need to refresh your equipment daily if you can in order to come on this program and get other programs here as well. Um, Kelbeck, I'm sorry you have, uh, you found the live chat, live chat, but you can't 
get the show to play. I'm so sorry. We'll get all these problems worked out. I promise you that, guys. I promise you that. We're sure doing our best to do it. Terry Rimple's here, folks. Yay, Terry. How you be? Yeah. We're glad to have you here, brother. Oh, thanks. <laughs> We're all together again. <laughs> all right. Would you like to tell us the things that you've learned today? Yes. Now, um, first of all, um, this, this would go better if I could um, show everybody stuff, but apparently the whole Zoom thing isn't working, so I can't, uh, I can't show everybody what's going on, but uh, that, that would have been preferred. Um, but um, I did a, a little walkthrough between, uh, on Google Earth between um, Mount Garibaldi and Mount Meager in BC yesterday, mm -hmm. and I found a structure in a 39-mile group of mountains, and once I found one, I found more, and these are called Tuyas, T-U-Y-A. Uh, a Tuya is um, like a chimney rock, almost. Um, and some of them are called chimneys. Um, the chimneys actually relate to um, the remains of old volcanoes, the lava core. Um, but uh, these, these chimney-like structures are too weak to survive glaciation, but they're caused by magma coming up underneath the glacier. So they absolutely identify an area as being active during the Holocene period, which includes the um, glaciation that occurred uh, some 13, 12, 13,000 years ago. Um, had they been constructed after um, or, or before the last glaciation, they're too fragile. They would have been wiped out by the next period of glaciation. So having one of these or any of these pinnacles proves that they're currently active areas. So anyway, this um, volcanic area is a 39-mile circle of um, older and newer volcanoes um, between Mount Garibaldi and Mount Meager. And is it a super volcano? I don't really know. I can't say. Um, but it appears that that potential exists. But it's certainly another area that um, has active volcanoes in it, whether it's a super volcano or not. Yeah. And then today I was going through um, the Cascade area on Google Earth. And I found um, West. Now, how I got to this before I, before I start, um, I was seeing magmatic infill signals, um, and I have been for months. Um, in the kind of the foothill mountains of the Cascades. They're mountains in their own right. They're better than foothills, but uh, in, in those areas, um, in Washington particularly. And um, um, one of these is, I've got a note, kind of scribbled here, scribbled here and there. Garrison Hill is one, and that's, um, um, it's on the east side of the um, bottom of Puget Sound. And another one is uh, Haystack Mountain. Uh, another one, uh, Cinnabar. Um, Cinnabar is another one, and uh, Cedar Moraine is another one. Anyway, they all have active infill signals, and they're in... in um, they're west of the volcanoes, and I was wondering why is this happening. So I went through the uh, Cascade Mountains, and this is important just because of people in Washington knowing their own risks in their area. If there's magma infill in 
um, Western Washington, west of uh, Rainier and Baker, um, they should be aware of why it's occurring or what what uh, what these magma signals mean and, and how that relates to their risks. So I found um, two years related um, to um, Mount Rainier. They're on the east side of Mount Rainier in an area of uh, Colfax Peak and uh, Lincoln Peak. Um, Double Peak uh, at uh, Cowlitz also has uh, two years, um, and there's north, south, and middle um, Cowlitz. And that's all part of the um, base of Rainier structure. So Rainier itself was active during the last glaciation period. Um, I also found uh, there's a, a classic tuva um, beside Mystic Lake. Um, and that's, so when it comes up under a glacier, the basic Tuya shape is a, a very steep sided cone with a, a bit of a flat top on it. But they're not all like that. Um, so what happens when a, a volcano is active underneath the glacier is that uh, it produces enough heat to create a glacial lake as well. So if it comes up against the ice itself, it'll have a flat top. But if it comes up in an inner glacial lake, you'll get very, very steep sided ridges with multiple steep protrusions. So there's variations on, on the basic. Um, so I found this at uh, Treen Peak, two years, uh, Mount Persis, Frozen Mountain, Red Mountain, Philadelphia Mountain, Merchant Peak, Iron Mountain, Hubbard Peak, Wilman's Peak East, Big Four Mountain, and Devil's Thumb. Um, also Helena Peak, Jumbo Mountain, and Mount, uh, Mount Bowen. That's a lot of areas for two years. That whole area was active. Um, and that's, that's covering a very big area um, right the, beside uh, Snohomish in Washington. Um, just, just a little bit uh, uh, south, uh, southeast of Snohomish. So there's, there's a lot of magma infill um, in the mountains of uh, the, the mountains, small mountains west of the main Cascade Range in Washington. So that's what I wanted to make you aware of. That's cool. And these two years absolutely prove it. You, you don't have to look. There's lots of calderas and stuff associated. Mm -hmm. um, and they give the features of being um, volcanoes, but it's hard to know the age until you look at the two years, because the two years con conclusively but they were worked of recently, recently being in the last um, 12, 13,000 year period. And that's fairly young. Yeah. That's very, very young, actually. A lot of places here on the earth are a lot older than that, millions of years, and this being relatively uh, many thousands of years, that that means that it is very young. Uh, young terrain. Yeah, yeah. I, I found a very interesting feature on um, the east side of um, Mount Rainier. Mm -hmm. um, now, it's a very steep-sided ridge structure that connects to pinnacles that are tuyas as well. So a very active, these, these are large tuyas, so you can have small ones and large ones. Um, so there's, there's a grouping of very large tuyas that ex, um, extend from, a ridge extends from them that's very nearly parallel and steep-sided and then drops off. And uh, these are obviously um, relatively recent um, volcanics. Now the whole area is incredibly steep. And that's what two years are. They're, they're all incredibly steep. And so are the ridges that form within a glacial lake. Um, incredibly steep sided, more so even than, uh, than what stratovolcanoes are. Um, so 
So they're they're near vertical drops, um, and given the rainfall around Mount uh, Mount Rainier, they were still treed. Now I've got lots of experience in looking at and being involved in um, logging operations, but you, you can always see roads. You can see landings um, related to tree harvesting. Mm-hmm. You can't get in there without making some sort of a mark. Well, this um, fairly good sized area has trees laying down all over it. It's low enough down that it gets tree growth. It's not up in the alpine. Um, but the trees are all laying the on the ground. Yeah, so these trees are bleached white and laying all over it. And they've obviously not been harvested because when something that steep, um, you can't, um, you, you show obvious signs of harvesting because it will only grow so many trees. So when you see a lot of trees on a very, very steep sided mountain uh, or, or mountain slope, you know, it's not been harvested. And these are bleached white and there's a little bit of greening coming up. Um, around the trees, but there's no trees, just um, no small trees that are seen on satellite imagery, just some greening. So what's happened in that area is it's gotten hot enough, um, enough gases have come out of that area three years ago, roughly three to four years ago, that it killed the trees, some rot set in, it blew them down, the bark's gone off of them and they're bleached white. So it might even be five years back. So this has been, um, like areas around Mammoth, there's been basically, it's been uh, root kill from uh, active magma. Right. Getting close enough to the surface and uh, pushing out gases or creating enough heat. I had you, I had you on the phone a while back and I don't remember what mountain I was looking at, but it had the same, um, Topography we're talking about. It had it had uh, uh, trees laying on their sides. I don't remember where that was. I'm trying to find it right now. I have Google Earth. You were talking about uh, north of Yellowstone. That's right. It was north of Yellowstone, wasn't it? Mm. Okay. Now I don't. I say I. I actually, folks. I named a volcano after me because it appeared it was a volcano. And I'm looking at Yellowstone right now, and I don't see that mark. Oh, here it is. I found it, Terry. Let oh, me let me show everybody. Do you see it on your computer, Terry? No, because I'm standing outside. Oh, you're standing outside. Okay, I'm zooming in on Mount Tyler. <laughs> in in uh, outside of Sealy Lake, Washington. And this is what Terry's talking Washington. about. Or not Washington, I'm sorry, Montana. Sea Lake, Lake, Montana. And in just a second, when this, when this uh, completely. Oh, yeah, I see it there. You see these trees laying on their sides right here. That's what Terry's talking about. Miles and miles of trees laying down on their sides. Yeah. Yeah, that's the same sort of thing. Yeah. And no logging roads. No, there's no logging roads anywhere near here. And some are still standing. Yeah. You can see the, the shadows from them and uh, a lot of uh, blowdown. Yeah. Now, I've zoomed out on this, on this particular... A volcano, and I'm calling her the volcano because here's the caldera. Yeah. There's a the caldera, and you see the rim of the volcano all the way around here. And all the way around this rim are these trees laying on their sides. So it's been active enough to cause uh, tree root kill at least. Yeah, all the way around this volcano. And I'm zooming around the snow snow-covered portion of this 
uh, volcano whenever this picture was taken, which was June 5th, 2016. So this is, this is four years, three and a half years ago when this picture was taken. But all the way around this rim of this volcano, trees laying on their sides, all over, all over. In the age of, um, let's see, the um, imagery date from uh, the one I was looking at was 2018. And you'd have to backdate uh, four years roughly from that. So that would be 2014 that we were getting tree kill um, from volcanic activity uh, on the east side of uh, Mount Rainier. Okay, do you want me to go to Rainier right now? You know, if you want to go there, I can probably uh, show you where to go. Okay. I'm hoping it'll take off here. It took it a few minutes to respond. Here we go. It's leaving Mount Tyler, which I named after myself. And there's Mount Rainier right there, folks. Here's a summit crater of Mount Rainier. Your zoom is catching up. Yep. Brown spot. A little, little lower down. Okay. A little to the left. Left, left, left with your cursor arrow. I'm. You know, there's a little lag time in, in the video and what I'm saying, or what I'm seeing and what I'm saying, I guess. So go to the left, Mount Rainier. You're still. You got to go right to the foot of Rainier, but on the east side. You're looking for. Would it be the north side? I guess it would be the north side. Okay, let's go to so the just north the side. base of Rainier. There's a few brown spaces here. Yeah, you want to go to where you've got Rainier in the imagery? Okay. So center of Rainier in the imagery. There we go. Just give it a sec so I can see what you're doing. Because it still hasn't caught up. There's a lag. Okay, now stop there. Don't move your hand. Okay. Leave your hand right where it is. Um, just a little bit up and to the right, there's a um, like a lahar flow out or something, and there's a little brown spot right there. I think that's it. So it's it's only a couple of inches to the right of your hand. Yeah, I'm bringing it in right now. No, not that one. The one on the left. Okay. Just to the left of where you are. Right there. And up to the left, there's another brown area. Right there. Okay. And that's right behind, beside Lake James. So it's that, that area right there. And what you're looking at, where it's sharp and jagged, if you zoom on, on, in on that, those are two years. Oh, you went to the left. You want to go to the right. <clears throat> Just to the right of those lakes. Okay. Right there. You're on the left hand side of the lakes. The jagged area right there. I'm just waiting for your screen to catch up. Yeah. Yeah. So that ridge, there's the jagged area. Um, we have to allow for the lag time. There's about the. Uh, five, ten seconds lag time on what, me talking to you and where your arrow is going or your video. Right. Um, so if you zoom in on that really rough structure of the ridge, you will see that those are very sharp and narrow. Yeah. And there's the trees that Terry was speaking of. So those are two years on the ridge a form of two years. So those formed within a, a glacial lake. 
So if you get enough heat, it'll happen in a glacial lake that you get these pinnacles. And then there's a ridge structure just on the other side of them. That's a continuation of that formation. And that's where all the trees are down. And you can see how incredibly active the volcano had to be to shove this all up in the water. Yeah. And that's why you get these formations. So just in the gap at the top of your screen, you see the ridge structure that carries on, and that's where the uh, trees are down, all along that ridge structure. Yep. I'm just waiting for the video to catch up. And you can see that ridge structure is incredibly steep sided. So if you get a little closer, Ron, just in the, the distance, uh, top of the screen is that ridge structure. Yep, I'm in there. Oh, okay. It's just not showing on my end. You have to zoom in to the, just beyond that pinnacle. Going beyond that to the top of the what's at the top of the screen, you see a ridge sticking up. That's yes. where all the trees are down. All over that ridge. Yeah. So you can zoom into that ridge and see all the trees that are down, just like the area that you saw at uh, at Tyler Volcano. Yeah. See all these trees all over, thick, thick. Just all of it. by volcanic activity of some kind, heat or gases coming out of that ridge structure. And we know that it's a current, um, current era activity um, location because it's got the two years in it. And if you were to go to the end of the ridge and turn, of, turn to face the other direction, you would see how steep side at the end of it is as well. And that's all um, indicates that it was formed in water. So it uh, it's in keeping with the evidence of the two years. So one, one thing confirming the other thing. And now I'm on the other side of the ridge there. You can see how steep this is. And even at the very tip of the of the ridge, you see all these trees laying on their sides. And that little thing sticking up there at the end of the ridge on yep. the right hand side near the bottom, yep. that's another tuya. Which again is a feature of for a volcanic formation that comes up in water. Yep, that's it right there. There you got it, folks. And now it's funny, it's frozen. <laughs> oh, well. That's funny. We got the most of it. Yeah, we got the most of it. So you saw it, folks. You saw it. It's just, it's completely amazing. It really is. So what, what we're seeing is past evidence of volcanic activity going back now about five years. Otherwise, the trees wouldn't show up as uh, bleached white, which means the bark is off of them. And it takes a couple of years of weathering for that to happen. Yeah. Just amazing. Just so it's, amazing. it's interesting what you can find just going around on Google Earth. Yeah. Very much so. Very much so.
Love it. Love it, love it. And this is all over. This isn't the only place on earth that, that uh, you can see this at. It's everywhere. Literally. Yeah, apparently everywhere. there's a whole bunch of tree kill around Mammoth. I haven't had a good close look there. Yeah. Let's go over there and look just for kicks and giggles. Sure. Apparently it's a massive area around Mammoth. Mammoth Mountain. I've been seeing uh, very significant earthquakes, not, not today, but um, recently at uh, Mount Lassen, the closest site that I have to Lassen. Yeah. I. And Rainier was incredibly active again today. Yeah, it was. The uh, Boyd Creek site. Yeah, Lassen was, was active uh, yesterday morning. It was moving. <laughs> Why is it going so slow? Did you hit the search button? Yep, I hit the search button. It's moving now. Your computer is behaving like it's got a load on it. Yeah, and I don't know why. And even before I even came on the air today, or lat tonight, um, Excuse me. I uh, I did a uh, complete update of my virus scan and I scanned it, and so it should not at all be lagging. But it is. It is. Yeah, they got a building here. I don't dare get any closer to it because it'd go flat on me. No, no. This is mammoth, folks. small piece of the crater here. I'm wondering if it was the vent that opened up on the side of the mountain the other day when they said it vented. I'm just kind of scanning this whole this whole area here. You can see the ski runs down the side of the mountain. But this is 2016. There, I don't see any significant <clears throat> sign of. Uh, I'm going to see what I get from here. Uh, I made you small screen. Oh, you made me small screen? <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. I didn't want to make a small guy out of me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh, I love it. I'm just looking, uh, because my uh, computer is working faster, I'm looking for a tree kill. Yeah. And then I can give you the coordinates if I find something. Cool. That's kind of what I was looking for is tree kill, and I just don't see it here. Yeah. Yeah, there is. And it looks like somebody's up here with uh, with the equipment to pull 
oil and gas out of here. There's a lot of pipeline out, out here on the surface. Oh, is there? Yeah. Quite a bit of pipe out here, actually. Well, I guess they uh, get to keep whatever they took, and then they're not going to have anything much more going on in the ground. Yeah. When you have volcanoes, folks, and you start mining out of the volcano, side of the volcano, which they do, and you start pulling oil and gas out and water, steam. Man, I don't know why I'm yawning. Jeez. Turn up my air here to see if that's an issue. But uh, when you start pulling stuff out of the ground, the ground starts subsiding. And it could, in the case of a volcano, it could open up to be a vent in the volcano. Now, it looks like these people are getting ready to do oil and gas exploration here. There's a ton of pipe all over the top of this thing. Oh, really? Well, I heard about the massive tree kill, but I'm not finding it so I'm far. not either. Yeah. Why well, it's sure a big structure though. Yeah, it sure is. It's huge. Yeah, it's huge. What is my imagery date? Oh, I'm at ninety three. No wonder. I have uh twenty sixteen. June twenty sixth, twenty sixteen. Okay. I was misreading my computer. Yeah. I do not. I'm out in the lava beds up north of it a bit. Yeah, I was looking at that too, just a minute ago. Thousand Island Lake. Tiny lakes all over this area. Yep. Yeah, there are. I gotta get down out of the Alpine. Yeah. I'm not gonna find any trees there. Uh, a lot of this is Alpine wilderness. I was in Yosemite 90, 1994, and there were tree, trees on their sides there, but the fo I, th I think I told this story once on the air, I, or it wasn't 94, it was 93. A bunch of us went camping up here in Yosemite, and we had just gotten in to Yosemite Valley and we just found our camping place. We we're going to be camping for about 10 days. And no sooner had we gotten out of our vehicles, I'd stepped out of mine, I heard a huge crash, everybody did. And we thought, oh crap, a large plane has hit the side of the mountain. It wasn't a plane folks, it was a rock fall from the top of Yosemite. The rock fell a complete mile until it got to the valley. Wow. The wind from the falling rock knocked over 600 long pole pine trees. Well, actually, they call them lodgepole pines. 600 of them knocked over by just the wind from the falling rock. The rock hit a trading post and flattened it, killing four people. I remember hearing about that. Nobody was alive. 
I spent all night after the um, original collapse of the rock because by that time it was setting, it was dusk, sun was going down and there's no way we conduct, we could conduct a search and rescue. But I was asked since I, my whole job with my department at that particular time was traffic. I was asked to set up a traffic control point inbound into Yosemite, controlling access to Yosemite. That night, people that had been camped there in Yosemite Valley had left. Because of the rock, because of the rock fall, the place looked like craters of the moon, coated in gray dust from the granite that, that had come down that night. And the next day, they relieved me and put a ranger over the traffic control point where I had parked a bunch of um, TV and radio station uh, rigs, quite a few of them, big, huge motorhomes turned into communications posts for these radio and television stations, probably about 30, 40 of them, whatever it was. But I was asked to go from there and, and uh, continue on with search and rescue at this trading post. And yeah, we finally found the bodies and pulled the bodies clear of it. But quite honestly, it was one of the most um, astounding things that I've ever had to see. Rock falling that huge distance and then us having to dig through that rock to the trading post to uh, bring out those people. Incredible. Yeah, yeah, it would be. Incredible. And of course, I couldn't sleep until we got done. I was wide awake from the time I I ran over to the fire station there in Yosemite Valley and got my orders and then drove my truck after I had loaded the stuff for the everybody's camp. I uh, drove my truck over to where I would be directing traffic the rest of the night. But uh, it was completely incredible. I'd never seen such utter devastation in all my life. And I'm not finding any of those trees falling down here at Mammoth. No, I can't find it either. But I just, you know, that spot on Rainier wasn't all that big. No, it wasn't. I was cruising around at my own pace at the time and uh, and happened to find it. You found another one uh, doing kind of the same thing at... Um, Sealy Lake, Montana. At Yellowstone. Yeah. Sealy Lake, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, I'm giving up on this one. Me too. I found what I think is a sulfur coming up here on the side of one of the rock. And I believe it is sulfur. Jeez. It's just an area that's just loaded with volcanics. So. Yes, it is. Yeah. Here's a vent, I'm zooming into it right now. It's a lake and the crater is right there in the middle of the lake. You can see the plug, the summit. That a little uh, south of there at Laurel Mountain or south, uh, southeast and it's all volcanic. You can do this. All day. Yeah, you could. And <laughs> I have. Done it at times. <laughs> and I have. It's it's crazy. It really is. The amount of volcanics through the Cascades, and uh, you look just you know take take the, maybe take the people on a tour just north of uh, Shasta. Yeah, let's go up there. Let's go north to Shasta here. We're right now looking at the Gorda Escarpment. I pointed this out before on maps, smaller maps. This Gorda Escarpment goes almost about 200 miles off the coast of California. Here's a 5.3 out on the far western end of the Gorda Escarpment, um, January 2nd, 5.3 out here.
and I zoomed out so you can really see exactly what is going on here. And then this, this um, Gorda escarpment goes out and there's a ridge that goes north uh, east here over to the uh, over to uh, the Blanco fracture zone and then hooks up with a uh, Juan de Fuca and goes north northwest but it's it's wild here let me go back. Okay, I was getting carried away there. It's okay. That's what we do. Yeah. There's a so gore. go to the north, north base of Shasta, right at the base of Mount Shasta itself. You can see it's all lava flows down the mountain. And it takes you directly into cinder cones and lava fields. If you get uh, zoomed in down to where you can uh, see an angle, they show up pretty easy. There's Mount Rainier. I'm too far north. It still think I'm too far north. My computer wants to play games here. Ah, yes. Mine's rolling around fine. Oh, you're all set up for Mammoth Mountain on my screen. Yeah. <laughs> I've left Mammoth. Going over to Mount Lassen right here. I'll go to Shasta too, but it won't clear up. Last one's got a whole bunch as well. Yeah. This is not zooming in properly because it should clear up by now. It's just showing a blurred Mount Lassen. You just got blur? Yeah, just blur. Go to Shasta and see if we can clean up Shasta. This is terrible. It's just 
not the same without uh, having the imagery. Yeah. I can tell you all about it, but it's way better to see it. Yeah, it is. It is. Oh. I'm over in the chat room again, guys. Does anybody have questions for Terry or myself? Oh, I got out of Google Earth before I should have. George Mitchell wanted me to go to Redding, California. Be have a good night. Or southwest, sorry. Where to go? Where to go? Where to go? That's right. Go. There, there it is. Oh, it's due south of Shasta. Not far from Shasta Lake. Joker's Wild said, how do, how do we know there were castles in Idaho? The only castles I saw were uh, uh, volcanic mounds that looked like castles up on top of hills. Chastine Lake. It's gray rocks. Yeah. It's gray rocks. There are south of there. Between gray rocks and Redding. 156 miles away from Redding at a blast range west of the ash flow. He's talking about here. Who's they're talking about? 156 miles out of Reading. Yeah, away from Reading. And we're looking for what? An ash flow? There's an ash flow, apparently. No. This is west of the ash, ash flow. Is asking me, um, can you explain the rock that exploded over by Puerto Rico? I was not aware of any rock that exploded near Puerto Rico. There was a arch that was a tourist trap, a tourist attraction down there in southern Puerto Rico, and it fell. The earthquake that hit there destroyed that. What once was a beautiful arch over there in southern Puerto Rico is no more. I was not aware of any rock that exploded. Closest uh, volcanics to Redding is Black Butte that I have found so far. Yeah. That's a cinder cone. Very obvious cinder cone. In the middle of a pretty obvious lava bed. That's just north of uh, Dales and uh, northwest of Paynes Creek. And just in the Paynes Creek area, there's a bunch of um, cinder cones as well. Wow. All over a low mound. Okay, now they're saying it was a meteor that came over Puerto Rico two days ago. 
Wow. Yeah, I heard about the meteor, but I haven't seen any pictures or anything else. So Paines Creek is not far from Lassen, and I pick up Lassen from there, actually. I'm actually uh, a little... Yeah. I've been all over that area before. It's unreal. And yes, Joker's wild. Uh, the earthquakes have ruined Puerto Rico. And by the way, um, I wish I'd still had it. I exited out before I realized I should have saved it. The um, Someone put up a video on Facebook of supplies that had been shipped in by FEMA for the earthquake survivors in Puerto Rico after Hurricane Maria last year. And they found a whole warehouse full of supplies. And the governor at the time that Maria hit was a real pain in the butt. And he was evil and corrupted as all get out over there. The new governor said she didn't know anything about those supplies. She had only heard about supplies that had been taken out and thrown in open fields and such. But she said the people that were in power, um, that were in charge of distribution of all those supplies can still be held accountable. But she and her administration didn't know anything about the supplies that had been found, I guess, today or yesterday that they showed on Facebook today. There was a lot of them, pallets of supplies, water and such. She didn't know anything about it. But the powers that be that were over in Puerto Rico during, the, during and after the earthquake were supposed to have distributed those supplies and didn't. Pam Beth, yeah, my computer's playing games like tic-tac-toe, yeah, I wish. We have meteoroids, Diane was talking about, Diane was talking about meteoroids expect to come by us for a few days. We've had meteoroids coming by and hitting us uh, for the past basically two months. Laura says it's been about a thousand years since Mount Rainier erupted, she thinks. Um, what about Shasta? Do you know anything about Shasta, Terry? How long it's been since Shasta erupted? Well, I can tell you in just a sec. This is just the wiki version. Volcano in the Cascade Volcanic Park. Yeah. Right. Um, yes, I love that movie, Wargames. So at least 200. Uh, that puts it back to 1250 AD, proved by uncorrected radiocarbon dating. Wow. Yep. Yep. Any other questions, folks?
And Beth, you can lighten up the mood anytime. Mount Shasta is connected to a satellite cone of Shastina, wow. by the way. Did not know that. It consists of four overlapping dormant volcan volcanic cones. So it's a series of four of them. Mount Shastina rises to uh, 3,760 meters, which is 10,000 10, feet, something like that, yeah. which has, and has a visibly conical form. And if Shastina were a separate mountain, it would rank as the fourth highest peak in the Cascade Range. Wow. That's wild. Yeah, no kidding. That's huge, actually. That's huge. So now we're going to find Shastina just out of curiosity shape. <laughs> That's what I heard too. It was the lower end. I've never read it. I think they told us that back in college, but I don't remember exactly. I don't remember exactly everything that happened in college, period. That's because we're old, Ron. That's right. We're really old. <laughs> <laughs> really, really, really. <laughs> anyway folks i think what we'll do at this point in time we're going to call it a night we hope you've had a good time tonight we hope we hope that you got a lot of good information out of what we've talked about tonight uh, learn more about what's going on with the volcanoes and what's going on with our earthquakes because we have quite a few of them that are still plaguing us plaguing by meaning it's going to happen they're going to go but uh we want to make sure that everybody's ready. That's why we keep going back and discussing it and talking about everything and talking about what we're going to do and going through the preparedness aspect as well. We're going to Jordan be back. Wild is asking, is it true that my app shows that the frequency has gone up in the Cascadia, but not the energy? It's both the frequency and the energy. Yeah. Yeah, we showed because you the energy. We've, we've had venting. Not just in the Cascadia, but from uh, Mammoth and from Lassen, um, and then Shasta, and these are major venting episodes, not yeah. just a little bit of steaming. Right. Um, from Shasta Hood, Sisters, um, Rainier, um, and there there was a total of um, seven before Lassen and Mammoth, so there's nine um, um. in that same general chain. Um, Owen oh, Baker as well. Um, so certainly um, the activity has gone up to the point where you get um, major venting episodes. That means the volcano that was dormant had to have all of the magma reheated that was inside of it um, to the point where it bulges the sides and you get some fracturing signals from that because that happens before any volcano vents. It's um, a process that occurs at all volcanoes. And then the cap rock gets thinned as part of that process. And then the pressure with the steam of the rising subduction magma, which contains water, it releases steam and you get steam bursts inside the volcano.
cranial, that fractures a cap rock, and then you get venting. So that's the process that occurs. And so to get to a stage of having venting, it must have uh, more than just frequency. It actually has to have greater activity. The energy has to be higher. Yeah. Yeah. And you can see it on the seismograms. Yeah. We're getting all kinds of um, internal um, steam bursts in the volcanoes at Hood, at Baker, at Rainier, at uh, Mount St. Helens. Um, Shasta, I don't have good enough size, seismology to uh, see what's going on at Shasta as far as um, um, steam, steam bursts in the volcanoes. But it, it's apparent through the range. Yeah. Yeah. So if the others have vented and they have steam bursts, then um, the same thing's going to be happening at, happening at any other volcanoes that are doing the same thing. Yep. You can draw parallels between them all. Yeah. Very, very We've true. got enough of them well watered that we know what's happening at all of them. Anyway, folks, we'll be back here tomorrow night with some more information on what is going on. Uh, we're going to be talking about uh, some more preparedness information for you too. Monday, we have Terry Rempel uh, that's going to be joining us again Monday night uh, with some great information as he always has. And we really appreciate Terry and all the, all the work that he's done and keep, he keeps putting in to um, give us information to prepare us for this point in time that we're all coming down to. I uh, want to thank everybody that's been here tonight. We really appreciate everything you do to help us. And uh, we hope that you'll join us here again uh, tomorrow night. Uh, we'll be on YouTube tomorrow night for at least the first hour. Um, then we will be coming over here to the Freedom Revolution Network to complete uh, our tour of duty, so to speak. But we hope you will be joining us tomorrow night. And we look forward to seeing you then. And also, as always, please like our program. If you enjoy what we do here, you can also donate to our program. Um, please invite your friends, your neighborhood, your, uh, your uh, family to our broadcast so they can join you and be aware of what's happening. That's very important as well. That's very important as well. Anyway, thank you very much, everyone. God bless. Do know that we love you. And as Walter Cronkite would say, and that's the way it is, Saturday, January 18th, 2019. For Emergency Management Associates, this is Ron Tyler. Have a great night, folks. See you tomorrow.